Hi everybody, my name is Sharita. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a video that was requested by one of my favorite followers, Callie Blops, and she suggested that I talk about the placements at Worlds uh, in the medium co-ed division. Apparently there's been a lot of upset people who don't quite understand the placements, and so I went to Twitter and I asked hey, if I made this video called Spirit of Texas Royalty Should Have One Worlds, would everybody hate me? And I actually got a lot of positive feedback from people saying, absolutely not, like, please speak the truth. We would love to hear what you have to say. So I guess you can say it's a highly requested video. So here I am, and I'm going to be talking about why Spirit of Texas Royalty won the medium co-ed division at Worlds in 2016. If you are interested, go ahead and keep watching. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly, quickly, quickly go over the world score sheet just so everybody knows how it's broken down. Stunts, pyramids, standing tumbling, and running tumbling, all, uh, both technique and difficulty, are out of a 10. Now the difference is in uh, technique, the high range is 8 to 10, and in difficulty, the high range is 4 to 10, which... I don't understand that six point like that's a six point spread which I don't understand in basket tosses and in jumps difficulty is out of um, five and technique is out of ten now basket tosses and jumps it's very very easy to score a five in difficulty now technique is the high range is an eight eight to ten a routine creativity and building creativity is just out of a five dance formations and overall those are both worth 10 points. So there's no like technique or difficulty. It's just out of a 10 or out of a five. If you guys want like a more in-depth conversation on the score sheet, let me know in the comments below because trying to explain the score sheet and then talk about a division, it would be like a five hour video. So if you guys want to know more in depth on how the score sheet works, such as being in the high range, not being in the high range, what qualifies being in the high range, let me know in the comments and I will definitely make a video about that if you guys are interested. So now onto the meat and potatoes of this video. At first, I was just going to compare Spirit of Texas Royalty to California All-Stars Black Ops because there were a lot of people, and this is just me going through Twitter, there were a lot of people who were saying things such as, I don't understand how royalty won and I don't understand how California All-Stars didn't place. So I'm like, well, obviously, like, those are the only two teams that I'm going to talk about. But then, like, I went through and I watched, like, first place through fourth place. Every team in the top four technically had potential to win. And honestly, I had no idea who was going to win. After awards, I was kind of like, eh, I'm not really sure, like, if I agree with the placements. But remember, I was only watching as a fan. So finally, I went back and I watched the routines as a judge. I agree with the placements. I, for the most part, will always back up judges because I myself am a judge and I don't want people thinking that we're biased. I didn't agree with the judges, so I had to go back and look for what the judges saw. And I'm no way affiliated with any of these gyms. So the way I'm gonna do this video is I'm just going to talk first through fourth and I'm gonna let you know why these teams scored as high or as low as they did. So I'm gonna start with the Spirit of Texas Royalty because obviously they won worlds. Point blank period Spirit of Texas Royalty won because they were clean. That's all there is to it. It Yes they had the difficulty but so did the other three teams but Spirit of Texas were very very clean and very very technical. If you watch the flyers' legs and their basket tosses, their ankles never cross. And this is through the entire routine. When they do their kick double baskets, they kick, they squeeze their legs, and their legs, their ankles, not even just their legs, their ankles stay together, even until the bases catch. Their tumbling was very clean. They had creative transitions during their tumbling sections. The entry to their elite was very creative. They did like a swing stunt into like a smush or something like that. And on top of that, they did a double up to one leg. And a lot of people, yes, they do do double ups, but they usually go to two legs. And they're the only team in the top four that did full squad double up on one leg. I know during their partner stunts, there was that third stunt to the left 
that like could have been a bobble but I don't know because I think it was a two man they did switch up to stretch now this is where people get upset like what do you consider a bobble I know the bases moved underneath her but she didn't break her body position not one time so she did a heel stretch she did her job the bases were you know kind of wobbling underneath her but I feel like that could have been taken off in technique judges should be using the point system technique is eight to ten so they should be giving out 8.5s 9.1s stuff like that so maybe that one bobble could have brought them down like two tenths of a point or something like that and sorry not a bobble but the base is adjusting underneath her now had the flyer like dropped her hip or you know like dropped her leg and then pulled it back up that's definitely a bobble like that right there is a bobble but the job of the the deduction judge is to let the person who's judging stunts know like hey I didn't take that deduction because I didn't feel like it was a true bobble so can you just lower their technique score a little bit that's because you see like a little balance check or something like that doesn't always mean it's a bobble and doesn't mean that it's gonna drop their technique score like way 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 down during their jump sequence they did I want to say they did four different jumps and their jumps ended with a pike and then they did a back tuck out of it and that is hard and not only did they do pike back tucks after they did three other jumps but their jumps were flawless the whole routine itself there was no dead time it was very fluid it went through the motions you know you weren't like looking to the corner to be like oh is that person gonna go because nobody else is doing anything over here it was just a very like flowy routine like it flowed really well together after watching spirit of texas their routine as a judge i can totally see how they won i'll link the actual videos that i watched below and you guys watch the technique in those flyers baskets and the fact that they did double ups to one leg is more difficult than a team doing double up ground up double ups to two legs watch their technique in their tumbling watch their timing in their tumbling watch the creativity of that whole routine and you'll see what the judges saw now none of these None of these routines are going to have terrible anything. So I don't want anybody to take anything that I'm saying personal. This is just literally like me watching as a judge and explaining why teams scored the way they scored. Like I, I truly don't like doing these videos because I feel like some people feel like I'm attacking them, but I'm definitely not attacking. I'm just trying to educate. Now I'm going to talk about Marilyn Twister's reign. First thing that I noticed is that they had really clean tumbling, such as Spirit of Texas. Their basket tosses weren't as clean, they weren't terrible. Very elite, they did like the inversion where the bear's grabbing onto the base's shoulders and they're in an, they're in an inversion and they pop up and they went um, to bow and arrow. Actually the center flyer did a free stretch which is amazing and all the flyers showed great flexibility. They dropped down to a lib and they did low to high um, lib to stretch and then immediately stretch to stretch which that's hard. They did prep, double around to two feet, pulled scale, did a double down. Their boy center tumbler was everything. If technique was based on just one person, they totally would have blew everybody else out the water when it comes to technique. But this is a team sport, and while he had amazing, perfect tumbling, not everybody else did. It wasn't bad, it just wasn't perfect. In order to score a five in difficulty, you have to do three plus one or four jumps consecutively a lot of teams will do hurdler triple toe tuck you have to give them a five in difficulty but as a judge I would deem them a little bit in creativity you can't kill them in technique unless all of their toe touches are terrible but I would deem them a little bit in creativity because you just did one jump and three others yes but they were three of the same jump and as a coach i understand why you would choreograph that because it's clean their dance was everything i i love their dance so the difference between rain and royalty i believe was cleanliness in the stunts and maybe a little bit of creativity in the entry to their stunts and a little bit of creativity just routine creativity all together now i'm gonna talk about rockstar beetles in my opinion rockstar beetles had a very clean level appropriate routine but i just don't feel like it was as exciting 
as the other two teams. What I noticed about all these teams is, is that they did the handstand where they're on their basis shoulders inversion and all popped up. And Beatles did that too. They did it to heel stretch and then, or like lib and then stretch and then they did a ground up double up and then they did prep double up and I don't know how they didn't throw up after all those double ups. They did a uh, like a stretch, like a high to high stretch to scale double. There was one tumbling pass and if I'm not mistaken, I want to say that at this world they were taking deductions from people not completing their rotation in their tumbling passes. Now this is another like gray area type deal, just like bobbles. So there's a girl, I think she was like the last tumbling pass, she did like a whip dub. And while no, she didn't land like facing all the way to the corner, honestly, may, and it wasn't like she was completely like to the side, but she was like maybe at an angle like this. So that could have been taken off in technique. And like I said, just because one person does it, doesn't mean that their technique score is gonna drop down a whole point. Beatles also did hurdler triple toe tuck. I don't know if they weren't scored as high in routine creativity because of that, but like I said, they got the five points in jump difficulty and their baskets were gorgeous. They were very, very, very technical with, you know, legs together, ankles together. I hate saying that. I always say legs together. Your legs can be together, but your ankles aren't. But their ankles were together and their um in their baskets and i love seeing that more than anything they also had oh my gosh that dance it was my favorite because the first time i watched it i was like it was like a one eight count dance with so that pause and then they kept going and i was like hey yeah between beatles and rain those are my two favorite dances now california all-stars black ops so they also had an amazing routine I feel like black ops didn't score as high based on technique alone. Like I said, royalty, I feel like they won because of technique and I feel like Black Ops didn't score or didn't place as high based on technique. So technique is super, super important, especially when everybody has the same amount of talent. In the beginning, they do like toe touch and then they do a standing, um, like a standing series pass, a standing tumbling series pass. If you watch the toe touches, they're not hyperextended. Some of them aren't even level. They kind of just like, eh. And then the tumbling out of it is phenomenal. But you have to look at what they did before. You have to look at that toe touch. The one thing that I absolutely, absolutely loved about Kali's routine was their jump sequence. Like I said about the other teams, everybody else is doing like triple toe tuck, blah, 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 blah. Triple toe tuck, triple toe tuck. I don't like that. Kali did four different jumps, I believe. I'm lying. They did hurdler pipe double toe tuck and that's different than what everybody else is doing they definitely had more creativity in their jumps i think one of the biggest things that prevented black ops from placing any higher was their basket section if you really watch those baskets you can't tell i mean you can see like in the middle she does kick kick double you can see that like blatantly everybody else you don't know if they're just doing a kick double. You don't know if they're doing a hitch kick double. You don't know if they're trying to do a kick kick double. Yes, they all did do some form of a kick double basket. So they are going to score a five in difficulty right off the bat because they did their, you know, they did their um, squad baskets and then there was, you know, another toe touch basket and I think even another like kick double basket or something. However, the technique in their baskets, it was like, because I... I watched it a couple times. I didn't know if, you know, the outsides were doing kick doubles or hitch kick doubles or just straight kick doubles. I'm not sure. Watching it as a judge, like you're gonna notice that they're off. And by off, not like they're not synchronized, but they don't all look the same. I feel like that one section kind of, they they scored a little lower in technique than the, than the other teams. Because the other teams, you knew what they were doing. I felt so bad. Like, I do not like this. Yeah. They had two inversions, which was great. They did like a handstand, um, one and a half round of scale. They did a one and a half to prone. And then they did, the, you know, the handstand holding the bases, um, shoulders, popped up to arabesque. And then they did high to high double arounds. 
it was another skill that I think kind of hindered them from scoring as high as they could have. And while a high to high double round is very, very difficult, not all of them were completed as a full double around, if that makes sense. So there's another skill that may have lowered their technique score. One more thing that I noticed about their elite is that they had no TikToks. I don't know if that's something that all the judges wanted to see, but all the other teams had TikToks, but they did not, at least not in their elite section. So yeah, that's it, I guess. If you guys have any further questions or if you guys completely disagree with me, please let me know in the comments below. I promise, promise, promise you nothing I said in this video was meant to be mean or malicious. This is just how our sport is and when a team doesn't win, you kind of have to point out what they did wrong. And I'm not saying that these teams are not talented. Everything that I've said came from a professional point of view and it has nothing to do with any individual athlete or any individual team, I promise. Please don't hate me. If this video helped you in any way, go ahead and share it. Make sure you guys subscribe to me so that you guys get notified when I post a new video. If you guys have any ideas for new videos, leave them in the comments below. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, thumbs it down. Thank you, thank you so much for allowing me to give you my professional opinion on why Spirit of Texas royalty should have won worlds. Thank you so much and thank you for your continued support. Bye.